I have to say at the outset that uh, when you've done what I've done for as long as I've done it, you never quite know how people are going to introduce you. And uh, David and Brett between them failed today to join a long line of dopes who say George Negus is the sort of person who doesn't need an introduction and gives you one. <laughs> but what they left out, I'm sorry David, I have to bring this up, my therapist told me I'd feel better. <laughs> you, you didn't mention I'm also a rapidly ageing sex symbol, that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Queensland when I grew up was a great place to live but you wouldn't want to think there you know, that sort of place but the, th the three things that we were told you must never ever talk about were sex, religion and politics why? oh it makes bad friends what they never told us was what made good friends and by the ripe old age of about 18 I realised the only things worth talking about sex, religion and politics but I haven't stopped talking about them since in fact, I make a living out of it. I have been thinking for some time now about what to say to a group like yourselves. And I'll get around to superannuation, I can assure you. But I thought, well, actually, what I've been saying to people, super fits into the, into the, the if you like, the, the subject area. Because it strikes me that there have been some monumental changes going on in this world in all of our lifetimes. But what I found myself doing was asking one question, really. And the question is, why? I'm just absolutely fascinated by why things happen and why things don't happen and why things change and why other things don't change. And if you like, I've been a total fraud as a journalist because other people are running around asking who and where and when and what and how. All I've been saying is, excuse me, why? We live in a completely different world from the one that you and I grew up in. Completely different, and completely different for the one 25, if you've got 25 year old, I've got two boys in their 20s. Half the time they don't know what I'm talking about. Because the world has changed so much. On the other hand, they know so much more about what's happened in the last 25 years, we should be listening to them. You think of the three, three of the most important words that I wouldn't have used 25 years ago. Google, blog, and Twitter. Now Google, what, who, what genius came up with the word Google? It sounds like a baby choking on a pharynx. <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, we're all old enough to know. You were called a twit, you, that means you're an idiot. <laughs> That's why I think they have calling it tweeting, not twitting, because we know what tweet really means. Blog, how rude. You had to get a plumber to come and remove it. <laughs> a blog. <laughs> and they're three of the most important words on the, in the planet. Yeah. Where, where your being here today is concerned, I think it's absolutely true for me to be able to say that 25 years ago, now I'm again been around long enough to remember when the Whitlam government introduced the whole idea of a national superannuation scheme. Right? I can remember 1993, I think it was, when the Keating government made it compulsory that employers take, their, take the 9% or you get 9% from them. And now it's still a debate about what it should be. But 25 years ago, it was super what? What's superannuation? And where life was concerned and planning for your future is concerned and whether it's retiring comfortably or whatever, the options were be filthy rich, so it didn't matter, or look forward to the pension. And now there is this thing called superannuation which makes it possible, right? It makes it possible for people who aren't filthy rich who have got used to a lifestyle that where the pension may or may not you know, meet the financial needs, there is this strange animal now called superannuation. The Mercury spoke to me before I came in here, by the way, and the girl said something about, uh, so what have you got to say about um, uh, retirement? Are, are you retiring, she said to me. And I said, that is one of the few words that's not been used to describe me, retiring. I've never been described as a retiring sort of a person. Um, but I knew what she meant. And I said to her, to me, it's, it's people altering, changing their lifestyle in a sensible, intelligent way, financially and otherwise, to enable the last few decades of their existence to be the way they'd like it to be. And I said, that's progress, if you ask me. However, when it comes to the ageing process, I subscribe to that well-known Scottish philosopher's adage, Billy Connolly. Billy was asked, uh, how he helped was uh, dealing with the ageing process. 
And Billy said, and I won't try and do a Scottish accent, I do a reasonable Irish accent, but Scottish, no. But Billy said, um, his attitude towards the ageing process was as follows. Everybody has to get older, but not everybody has to grow up. <laughs> and that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> um, I think we're lucky that people of our generation have been able to see the perspective of Fingers crossed that the future is okay to, you've got to be pretty dopey not to make sure that your future is, is as secure as you'd like it to be. But I'm not an expert, but I am a superannuation fan, which is why I decided to come here and talk to you today.